Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's build is the Mark II version of the Phoenix Protocol and Hierarchy of Needs setup we did quite a while back, but this time is focusing on Rift usage. With how powerful Phoenix and the Hierarchy can be with wiping out areas while in the safety of your well, I thought why not make a miniature version of this using Sanguines instead. The results came as no surprise, as overall they show a slightly more flexible build that you can use anywhere you like without the need of heavily investing into super for maximum damage. So today, I'll show you just how good a combo this sleeper hit can be. To start, you're going to want to have touch of flames so that fusion grenades can explode twice. Then you'll want heat rises where you can use your weapon's abilities while gliding the air. While airborne and have heat rises active, getting a kill will grant you melee energy. Looking into the fragments, Ember of Tempering, where solar weapon finder blows grant you and allies increased recovery for a short time frame. While active, your solar weapons will also create fire sprites. Ember of Searing, where defeating Scorched targets grant melee energy and creates fire sprites. Ember of Combustion, where final blows with solar super causes targets to ignite and create fire sprites. And Ember of Ashes, where you apply more Scorch stacks to targets. It's going to be similar to how our last build was done, as not much is required within the fragment section to change up how our rifts work. This is good in many ways, as it allows you, the viewers, to apply whatever fragments you like to affect your grenades and melee choice, which, as you can see, most of my fragments will be doing. For the mods and stats section, we will invest in recovery, discipline and strength as the main key stats to use. Recovery will be at tier 10, with no additional mod to support its regenerative cooldown. At this level with healing rifts, you will be getting a 48 second cooldown, however, Applying Ember of Tempering to the fold will most likely reduce the cooldown by an extra 5 to 10 seconds. Great combo to have with how easy it is to plot the following, and seems to be a perfect match when using anything for a fast recovery regen on the dot. A discipline will be at tier 7, but with full of focus on the hand, this will push the following to a tier 10 when active. Because of how the build is set up, you can swap the following mod out for Grenade Kickstart instead with thanks to Ember of Tempering and Searing secondary effects providing us a Fire Sprite. This is down to you depending on how often you will be using your grenades as the following will be having a cooldown of 37 seconds if you use Fusion Grenades. Once again, no additional mods are needed for this section. The strength is the same at tier 7 to 10 with Font of Vigor on hand. The same route can be followed as Discipline if you prefer Kickstart instead or Font Mods. Our cooldown comes to 42 seconds when using the Incinerator Snap ability, but may go down further when Ember Searing Effects does kick in. From here, we have Armor Charge and additional mods that can be applied. Charged Up is going to be giving you an extra plus one for Armor Charge once active. After that, adding on the Hammer Cypher mod will help with creating auto power as we go along. Having a Time 1 Solar Weapon Surge mod so that Solar Weapons get a 10% source buff while active, it's going to be helpful as this will be stacked with Sanguine's times 2 surge effect as well. Lastly, applying a times 2 time dilation is also helpful with retaining our charges by increasing our overall duration by 20 seconds. This is important as we won't be moving around too much while using the build. For weapons, I've chosen the Hierarchy of Needs bow for a sheer power and perfect match when being used in Well of Radiance and Rifts. The bow has a very high draw time compared to many other bows in game, which makes it very slow to pick up, use, and fire one after another. Now with his catalyst applied, you can speed up his draw time to fire faster, but this is optional as not everyone can get the following. Compared to many bows, the following does provide a high damage output the moment you activate Guidance Ring Exotic Effect, which allows your arrows to track and deal additional damage. This long with our rifts can prove to be fatal once you realise how great of a combo it becomes when tied into Sanguine's alchemy's effect. Of course, if this does not work out, then any bow of your choice is fine as long as you can net those kills. Heavy, we have the Apex Predator with Bipod and Reconstruction, and this is more meta endgame weapon that not a lot of people can get, which is understandable. Don't fret though, as Heavy isn't as important to choose here unless you want to maximise your damage output. So, pick whatever you like here, unless you do need to match the elemental down the line. Similar to what we did a while back with Phoenix Protocol, the only difference between the two is how all of this have a bigger impact this time compared to just waiting for a super. Your super will be used, as it will greatly benefit the damage boost and healing being provided. 
but the following will rely more on our healing rifts so we can have a constant heal and damage boost as well. Thanks to how Sanguine Alchemy now works, we will get a times 2 solar surge buff while in our well, and each kill made will extend our rift duration by 5 seconds. In many ways, this is like having a constant well of radius on demand, but on a more smaller scale. Beneficially, this can be helpful when you're in the enemy zone that you must clear out before progressing on the next section, such as Battlegrounds GMs or Raid Checkpoints. At the same time, the power that Hierarchy of Needs holds when facing targets is nothing to frown upon, as time after time, it's capable of dealing significant damage against mini bosses with or without surges applied. I chose Hierarchy because of its slowness that incorporates well into our uses of rifts. Do remember, we aren't going to be at the forefront when using the build, but rather on the back supportive line, providing as much suppressive fire from distance. As I said in my last video with Fiat's Pro Core Play, if you want a setup to where you don't need to move around a lot, but you do some amazing damage that can even make GMs a breeze, then this right here is what you want to aim for. While Well of Agents isn't going to be the big play here, it's still going to see some uses depending on how fast you can get it up. Rifts are underutilized in most content because they don't offer a lot, but at least in this setup it's providing some level of security and damage build up while you sit back, relax, and watch as the enemies from a distance go poof. Overall, what do you guys think of the build? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, but at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.